I would like to welcome and thank everyone joining us on social media today here at the Temple of the Living God in St. Petersburg, Florida. Today we have Reverend Carmen Lucis speaking on the topic of listening to our inner voice. I have some inspirational quotes that I've chosen to share on the topic. Our time here is limited, so don't waste it living others' lives. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. Have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. Steve Jobs, co-founder of one of the most successful American companies, Apple. We must trust ourselves more than others. Pay attention to your inner voice. It will tell you if, how, and what we're doing is right. Susie Orman, financial advisor and best-selling author. Our inner voice is the voice of divinity. Our inner voice has gentleness and clarity. To get to authenticity, we need to keep going to get to the honesty. Meredith Monk, composer, performer, director, choreographer, and filmmaker. And now we have Carol and the Goodfellows. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. I'd like to take just a quick minute and introduce you to the Goodfellows. Back here on drums, we have Lonnie Nichols. Let me get out of the way. And over here, we have Alex Garrido. Yeah, you're a very good fellow. And we've got a, a good song for you today. It's something that's a lot of fun, and I hope you like it. It's called Flying High. Well, it's a sunny day, and I'm glad to be alive. I'm doing what I want, I've given up my nine to five, yeah. I'm living life from love, and I'll soon be flying high.
<laughs> Makes you want to dance. And I saw some people dancing in their chairs. <laughs> Before I start my talk, I am going to invite Reverend Marvin Shepherd forth to make a brief announcement. And I saw him, but we'll maybe call him later. Why don't we do that? We'll, we'll, we'll call him up later. Okay. Okay. So, nevertheless, there's a story about a parrot, you know, those big, large, beautiful birds, who happened to have one small little baby born. And about a week or so after the baby chick, as they're called, uh, was born, it was showing exhaustion and fatigue, and it wasn't wanting to eat, and it wasn't wanting to drink. And what's very important is that when baby, these baby chicks are born, they're blind. And when they're blind, and when they regain their sight, it's important that they connect with their parent, because there's an imprinting that takes place in that time so that they recognize their parent or parents. Well, the owner of the baby chick was very, very concerned and wondering what to do. So after calling a number of different bird doctors with no avail, then he called a minister friend for prayer support and healing. And then he asked this minister to come over to his house and do some hands-on healing. So the minister did go over to uh, his house, and she was led into the room where the baby chick was, and realized that this chick really is just like low energy. It's just not moving. It's, it's, it's looking helpless. So she had a conversation with uh, the owner for a while, and then she was left by herself with the baby chick in the room, and she went into prayer mode. And after that, then she was guided, inspired, to put her hands around the baby chick, sending energy, sending Reiki, sending love, and just very gentle energies with the sole intention of having divine healing taking place. And then she prayed, knowing and affirming that the healing was whole and complete. So after the session with the baby chick, then she spoke to the owner for a short while, and then she left. And about an hour or so later, he calls her, and he is ecstatic. He is in such a state of joy and happiness, sharing that there is a phenomenon that's taken place. And he said, the chick, the baby chick now, is full of energy, is standing, is willing to eat, and has a hearty appetite. He was so very grateful and just appreciative of the healing that took place. So the purpose of this story is about trusting our intuitive nature that allows us to follow through in how we are clearly guided, and sometimes ending in a miraculous result. Studies have shown that our inner voice is very subtle, and it grows stronger as we listen. We know that each one of us can follow our soul's calling when we learn how to listen to our inner voice. Trusting our instincts and being at peace with that brings us the clarity that we need, the willingness and the faith to even move mountains. Our soul's calling will never leave us alone until we listen with intention and honor what it has to tell us 
and then follow through with that guidance. The gentle whispers that we experience, that still small voice within, speaks to each of us in a way that we understand what our soul is attempting to convey or express to us. And it's interesting how many of us are taught as youngsters not to listen to our intuition, to those gut feelings that we have. Perhaps many of us have been taught to sensibly think through situations and make decisions that are based on a logical mind. Anybody? I have a sense that all of us have had an opportunity or two in our lives to make a decision that we regretted afterwards because we listened to the voice of reason that persuaded us to do otherwise. For example, years ago I had the opportunity to go see a singer in concert. Some of you may have heard this story. And I was delightfully surprised to receive a call that informed me that this particular artist was performing at Ruth Eckerd Hall. So I called up Ruth Eckerd Hall and I asked, are there any seats left? And I was told, yes, as a matter of fact, there is, in the very last row. So I, had, I felt I had to go to this concert to be inspired by this particular artist in person. So when I got there, I went to the ticket booth, and I kindly asked the lady if there were any seats left. And she told me, yes, in the last row. So I paused, and then something was telling me to ask her again if she could just check to see if there was another seat available someplace else. So she did so, and I was very grateful that she did, because then she said, as a matter of fact, there is another seat available in the third row, in the center. Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> of course, I said, well, that's the seat I'll take, please. <laughs> Of course, sitting in the third row from the, stage, from the stage is an extraordinary experience, and I had a smile on my face all night long as I listened to the amazing voice of John Denver. And I recall feeling so very comforted and encouraged by his music and his presence. And there was always a soul connection that I felt with Mr. Denver, and that night, I was truly being blessed. My soul was truly being blessed. And it was a huge affirmation for me to continue writing my songs. After the concert, something was telling me to stay a while so that perhaps I would see Mr. Denver walking across the stage so that I could have an opportunity to thank him for the difference that he made in the world and in my life. That didn't happen. <laughs> so I left. As I was driving back across the Bayside Bridge, something was urging me to go back. But I kept on driving south. And the further I was from Ruth Eckerd Hall, the stronger the feeling got inside. I even stopped at a dance that evening, during which time the feeling persisted, growing more intense than before. And I felt like I had no choice but to turn around, get in my car, and drive back. And so I did. When I arrived at Ruth Eckert Hall, the front doors were locked, but something was urging me to go around back. So I did. There was movement going on back there. Parked my car, 
got out and walked to that to the back door, only to meet Mr. Denver's <coughs> marketing director, <laughs> who told me I just missed Mr. Denver, who got in his limo to catch his Learjet. So why I tell you this story has a two-part reason. Initially, my instincts told me that I had to be at this concert because there was something that I was going to experience that was very profound, and, it, and, and I had that experience. Then later, driving back after the concert, when I didn't listen to my guidance, as soon as it was beckoning me. I missed the opportunity to meet Mr. Denver in person. It took me months to get over that. <laughs> I'm, I'm reliving that now. When we listen to our inner voice, that spirit within, we, know, we never know how we will transform our life. Once we listen, to the power of the inherent wisdom that's in each of us. Each of us has to remember to listen to our own sacred guidance and to have the courage to trust ourselves. Our intuition is incredibly powerful. And I know you know that. It's nice to be reminded, though. But to hear to hear it clearly, we need to listen attentively, just as Inez was sharing. There's a quote that states, listen to your inner genius. Those who do often end up changing the world. End of quote. Even Rumi, the greatest Sufi mystic and poet, theologian, author, teacher simply states, listen to silence. It has much to say. Yeah. End of quote. As I mentioned earlier, most of us growing up as children were not given the tools how to use this sense. Yet I'm sure that we all are aware of that God feeling, yes? Yeah. Every time we follow our inner guidance, our inner voice, God's inspiration. We keep ourselves from feeling or having any reg regrets or disappointments. In Proverbs, it states, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Aren't we then being asked to listen and trust? And it's so very important to learn how to trust what we are feeling. Had we learned that at a very young age, our lives would have shifted differently. We would have made different choices. But in the meantime, we were guided, often by those who hopefully had our best interest at heart. Sometimes then, our reasoning mind told us that they were wiser because they were older and they had the experience. So they would know better. And we looked up to them for guidance. And that's in part how we learn, isn't it? Yeah. Yet we have to ask ourselves now, is that what works best for me today? Is that helping me to design the life I want to create for myself now? How am I following my heart's guidance? Or am I still living someone else's dream? For many years, playing the violin was my mother's dream for me, until I made it my own about 20 years later. And that shifted everything. 
Sometimes it truly is a blessing to listen to the wisdom and guidance of others. Their intentions may be very good, and yet we have to eventually come to a point of realizing we each have to find our own path, our own choices that will bring us a sense of peace, happiness, and joy. It's true that the quieter we become, the more we begin to hear. When we declutter our minds of all the chatter that goes on that keeps us from connecting with Source, with God, and we give ourselves permission to listen to that inner voice, the emotional voice that is waiting for us, that wants our full attention, we then move into the divine flow. When we take time to reflect in the silence, our inner voice will always have the answers that are for our highest and best good. When we listen to the gentle inner voice of reason, it will bring us a sense of peace and contentment. Just as Inez was sharing earlier about the statement of divinity, I chose a quote by a gentleman named A. R. Rahman, who's a renowned Indian film composer, singer and songwriter, and he echoes the same words of, our inner voice is the voice of our divinity. To hear it, though, we need to be in solitude, even in crowded places. Wow, what a goal for each of us to attain. Every time we go within, we have an opportunity to embrace the truth, to honor our own integrity, and we can then more effectively change our outer reality. And we know that whatever we give attention to grows, right? It's important that we use our inner voice to build ourselves up rather than put ourselves down. And that's a learning process that we all go through. Sometimes in life, though, we become blocked when we don't listen to our soul's guidance. Anyone experience that in their life? Perhaps. The inner voice within each of us is a powerful source of wisdom, beauty, truth, and reliability. It's always there to be accessed, and it always flows through us. As we learn to trust it, it becomes easier to take responsibility for the choices that we make in life. And here at the temple, we embrace self-responsibility, placing God, Source, as our primary focus that helps guide us and nurture us, strengthen us in all ways for the highest and best that we deserve in life. We learn from spiritual teachers and masters, those who have already passed into spirit and those present here today and in the world. For everyone, you and I, our instinctual powers were given to our souls at birth. As children, we were all inquisitive, curious. We asked questions. We were open to the awe and wonder of life. We listened to our inner voice as best we could. Sometimes, though, life threw us curveballs, and we began to listen outside of ourselves. 
and that may have caused confusion for many along the way. Wayne Dyer once said, and I quote, don't die with your music and talents still inside of you. Listen to your inner voice and find what passion stirs in your soul. End of quote. I encourage us all to realize, to remember, that our inner voice truly serves as our divine connection to the greater I am of who we are. Remember that we are each co-creators with God, and we serve as channels of divine expression in every moment. We just need to listen and pay attention. When you close your eyes at any given time, imagine, if you would, the best version of you that is possible. Give yourself permission to try that if you haven't done so already. And then gently let go of any part, any part of you that doesn't believe it. When we question our path, at any given time, and we're making decisions, think about these words. When something doesn't feel right, God says, no. When there is hesitancy, God says, slow. When there is confusion, God says, grow. When everything is aligned, at peace, and it feels right, God says, go. Mm. And then in Scripture, we are reminded to trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Remember that our inner voice is here to help us understand why we are here. It protects us, guides us, inspires us, and allows us to change. As we continue to embrace our spiritual path, we have to be very mindful, even in times like these that we're going through, that we don't close off our inner voice, that it is not subdued or silenced or controlled in any way by the news or people that may have strong opinions. It's true that the universe will shake us up to wake us up to what is true for each of us. We are invited to remember the truth and then live the truth and to find our peace in that truth, which is paramount, more so now than ever. And so, as we listen to our inner voice, as we move to our own rhythm, as we inspire our own path, let us continue to choose to shine our light and our love wherever we are, allowing our journey to be our sacred, unique experience. Why? Because your soul and my soul has the incredible opportunity to grow spiritually every time we listen to our inner voice and make a decision that is for our soul's highest and best good. I, remember, I invite all of us to remember that. And so it is. So it is. Namaste. Thank you. And at this time, is Reverend Marvin in the house? In our temple. In our sanctuary temple. Okay, thank you. I do want to remind you then, in your bulletin there is a reminder there that we have the Hurricane Ida Relief Fund Drive uh, going on. 
uh, this week and next week, I believe that we uh, will be collecting for that. So you can, uh, as, if, as the Spirit guides you to support that, then we invite you to bring your gifts to uh, one of us on the staff, uh, and then we'll make sure that those funds uh, do, uh, are sent to the, those appropriate um, organizations. And we ask those of you online as well, if you would like to support that, then you, there's a donate button also there on the uh, computer that you can donate for the relief fund as well as for our service. So I am going to move into the tithes and offerings at this time. And I would ask for the ushers to come forth, please. Reverend Carmen, may I ask a question? Yes. Are you having both um, offerings given no. right now? No, no. We're just doing the tithes and offerings. The uh, relief fund, that's something that you would come to us and uh, gift your gifts at that point in time. So let us share a blessing. Infinite source of all life, we are so very grateful to be here in this sanctuary, to receive spiritually. And we give with open and grateful hearts back to the temple with love. And so it is, amen. And now let us listen to Carol and Daniel and the Goodfellas as they share the final song. All right. This is a song that most of you are familiar with, and I just want to mention one thing, that it's written by Leonard Cohen. Um, but we've got lyrics that were written by Reverend Lucis. Our own Reverend Carmen wrote the lyrics for this. So it's the, it's the Hallelujah song and with Reverend Carmen's lyrics that she was just talking about being written, uh, being inspired by John Denver. Okay. I know that you are here today to discover your truth and find your way. May the angels watch and protect you always. Be still, listen, ask and trust, then wait, give thanks, for this you must. Let your heart sing praises with a hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your trust in something for so long has carried you through and has made you strong. You lifted your head, you smiled, and then you carried on. You sense, you know, you feel, you need It's all because you have faith and believe The voice of knowledge sings the hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah our sacred way we've searched within from day to day we've honored our path the best we can and we pray we prayed for peace for joy for life and love all the blessings we're deserving of the truth may shine in our hearts with hallelujah hallelujah The time has come to remember our part, to shine our light and share our heart, to claim our life as a precious, holy work of art. To embrace, to lift, to enhance, inspire the joy of another's soul's desire, the gift of life that's been given us, hallelujah. 